In our gospel here for today from St. John, we move from incredible fear to incredible faith. The disciples were locked up in a room on this Easter Sunday, still afraid for their lives. They'd seen Judas betrayal, the strong, the rock Peter denying Jesus. They'd all fled themselves and had seen the horrors that had gone on all the way through the crucifixion. And no doubt, they were afraid of the same fate for themselves. How could they not be? Everything that they'd experienced, how wonderful it was, it seemed to have come to a a crashing halt with the death of Jesus, even though he had told them time and again that he would go to Jerusalem, he would be handed over, he would be arrested, tried, crucified, die, and rise again. Even though they had seen him raise Lazarus, one of the last of the great signs for belief that happens in the Gospel of John, even so, Death is a difficult reality to deal with. I believe that they were overcome, overwhelmed, afraid for their own lives. Not only was the door locked where they were, but these disciples were locked up within themselves in fear. We know that there's fight or flight reactions to fear, but there are others as well, and being frozen in fear is one of those options. And so there they were, these disciples. What would they do? Where could they go? They hadn't even begun to figure this out yet. They were in fear. Time and again in the Gospels, it is fear that seems to be the antithesis to faith that holds us back from making the leaps of faith that we need to make, that we are called to make as followers of Jesus Christ. They were held back in this fear, not yet ready to go out into the world to face whatever was next. And then in the midst of them, he appears. And speaking to their fears, he says, peace be with you. They see him. They see his wounds. They realize it is him. He is risen. They begin to praise and they begin to worship. Everything has turned on a dime there in that scene. Imagine their elation. Imagine how free they felt all of the sudden, free from their fears. And in faith again, all except for one. Thomas was not there. We're not told why he was not there, what he was doing, if he got sent out for some milk and eggs or what the case may be. He just was not there. He did not see. And so even though after the women had been to the tomb and told the story, even after these ten had seen Jesus in the flesh and had told him their story, still he insists that unless he see, he would not believe. It's kind of the old saying, isn't it? Seeing is believing. Thomas had not seen. He has his doubts. He has his own faith struggle. Even though surrounded by those in faith, still he is wrestling with it. I think here we can connect. We have these times in our lives, don't we? Struggles, problems that come up, things that cause us to fear, things that give us doubts even about our most core beliefs, even when perhaps we want to believe more than anything else, those doubts are there. And sometimes it's doubt that is equated with the antithesis of faith, but I don't think so. I think you have to have some faith to doubt. Many times people have come to me in my 
career as a pastor and have expressed doubts, things that they are wrestling with and they're deeply bothered by doubt because there's a lot of Christian messages out there that will say if you doubt, then you don't believe as if it's one or the other. But I've come to see that it really is both working in the life of a believer. In order to doubt, you have to have some faith is what I tell people. Doubting is good news. Doubting is wrestling with your faith. You're in a place where you're being challenged and it's through a, an environment of challenge and being nourished or nurtured that we grow in faith. Having doubts, having faith struggles is an opportunity to grow even stronger. Stronger in trusting God, stronger in living out this faith that we're called to live. Thomas is in that spot. Jesus shows up again for him. Thomas, the big talker who wanted to touch the wounds, put his hand in the side, does not, if you notice. He sees him and he believes. Just as the others had told him, Thomas comes to a whole another place. And just as I read the text today, Jesus kind of admonishes him. Do you believe because you have seen? Well, yeah, of course he does. I, I envision Jesus kind of laughing as he says this, knowing full well where Thomas is at, knowing full well where so many of us will be at, doubting Thomases in our own times, in our own lives. It's all right. Faith and greater faith, I believe, is on the other side of that struggle. And Jesus says something to us here and now, I think. It's kind of like the movie Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Remember that? Every now and then he breaks the fourth wall, as they say, he interacts with the characters, but then turns right to the camera and speaks directly to us. It's a lot of fun. I think Jesus is doing the same thing here. He is saying to Thomas, you believe because you've seen, and then turns to us and says, blessed are those who have not seen and yet believe. That's us. The ones who were not there in that first Easter. Who did not see the man in the flesh and his wounds and hear his blessing words of peace peace that moves us beyond our fears this is us here the ones who haven't seen and yet believe because this event was such a powerful faith event that the faith that happened here would ripple on throughout eternity he speaks to us and then the narrator the gospel writer takes it even further tells us that these stories have been told and these signs have been shown throughout the gospel and much, much more could be said and could be written, but these, these are for our faith, for our faith, that we too might believe and believe in Jesus and by believing in him have life. It echoes of John 3, 16, doesn't it? Those who believe might not perish, but have eternal life. That's what the Gospel of John is all about, what Jesus' life is all about, what these disciples experience with him here in Easter is about. It's for faith and, and for our faith. And I think that movement from incredible fear to incredible faith happens in our lives and the lives around us and lives around the world all the time. This past week, I was at the bishop's convocation. Every, well, annually or semi-annually, the bishop calls the pastors together for a day or two of meetings to get us up to speed on things going on in the bishop, missions that we share, and this particular bishop's convocation was unusual. Usually, they're local, but this one was held in Puerto Rico. There we gathered with other pastors of our own synod, of the Maryland and Delaware Synod, and also of the Caribbean Synod. 25 pastors from the Caribbean Synod showed up. Did you know the ELCA had a Caribbean Synod? 
We're all trying to get called there, but it's hard to do. <laughs> we were there talking about ministry, and mostly on our part, we were listening. Listening to the stories, and the stories, they're framed up in pre-Maria and post-Maria. The hurricane that happened there, 2017. Every now and then on the news, you still hear about recovery efforts that are still happening. They're well underway, but there's still, still a lot to do, I understand. I was not there before, Maria. This is my first time in that country and first time hearing the stories and first person as well, and they're amazing. There's an image of the hurricane, Maria, from space. You can just see this large swirling cloud they showed us this picture, and all around it, this, the Caribbean and the Atlantic Ocean. And then they told us that under that cloud was the entire island of Puerto Rico. You couldn't see it at all. All you could see was the hurricane swirling around, wreaking its havoc. Later on, we would come to find that thousands and thousands and thousands of lives were lost. For months and months and months, people here in the mainland who were trying to hear from relatives did not hear from them until so very long. Some never did hear from them again. The infrastructure was damaged. Still, they're working on repairing roads and buildings and homes. There's a lot of work that has been done. There's a lot of work still to do. I cannot imagine as that Hurricane hovered over that island just how locked away in fear those disciples were. Fear for their lives. And around the world, this family and friends watched fear for the lives of those they loved. What we experienced this week, though, was not incredible fear. Here, so long after the hurricane, what we experienced was incredible faith. People of Puerto Rico, churches, congregations, Lutherans pulling together to fix things up, to move things forward. One pastor shared her stories of re-engaging with community and developing relationships. She's a yoga person, and so she started to hold yoga classes for senior citizens in their community and started to develop relationships and make connections. And that same pastor, she was working with people in that congregation, in the community, with Lutheran disaster response, other ELCA congregations to help build up infrastructure, saving up for generators so that when the next hurricane comes and they are preparing for the next one and more frequent ones given our global climate situation, they'll be more ready next time. That their church, their sanctuary will be a place of sanctuary where people can come, where the electricity will continue, where they can keep the medicines they need to cool and the food and take care of the people there in that building, seeing themselves not just as a, a ministry of worship, but as a ministry of service and a place of calm, peace, and ministry in the midst of the storm. a resource of life and faith for those communities. And they were excited about it, charged up about it. Whatever their ministry was pre-Maria, <laughs> post-Maria, it's truly inspiring. And they are sharing to invite us to accompany them in this. And I think we can learn a few lessons from them that out of death and destruction, they found new life, Easter life, new calling of worship and service to their community, being a resource to their people in their deepest times of need. And I got to think that when that happens, when the church is there where people really need them, when the chips are down and the worst is happening, that's where incredible faith can happen. That's where resurrection can happen. May the Lord be with you.
Let us pray. God, beyond our fears, God of faith, God of new life, we give you thanks for your Son entering into our locked-up fear and speaking words of peace, giving us faith and new life again. Lord, for our brothers and sisters, your children in Puerto Rico, rebuilding their lives, sharing their stories, sharing their faith, which is bigger than ever, we give you thanks. And God, may we here at Emmanuel Lutheran Church and around the world, may we be there for them and for the people in our own community, serving your children in need, giving glory to you, the God of life. In Jesus' name, amen.